Hey, it's Lucky. There are a lot of nodes in Godot, and in this series I'm gonna explain every single one. Last video we looked at 3D visual and physics nodes, and today we're gonna finish them all off with the last 3D nodes. We're gonna cover physics joints, global illumination, pathfinding, and a lot more. So without further ado, let's get into the nodes. Camera 3D. The camera 3D node shows what is visible from its location and shows that on the nearest viewport. By default this is your game window, but a camera can also be used to render a secondary viewport, for example a minimap or a mirror. A camera has properties for what visual layer it sees, its FOV, its near and far clipping point, and it has two slots for a custom world environment or camera attributes, which can be used to add post-processing effects to the camera. The vehicle body and vehicle wheel 3D. These nodes implement all the logic needed to simulate a car and are based on the Raycast vehicle system. Personally, I have not had great results with the vehicle body 3D and even the docs note that there are known issues with the node and that writing your own integration is advised for a more advanced solution. The joint 3D. The joint 3D cannot be used standalone, but it serves as a base class for making physics joints. In this note, the two physics bodies that are connected by the joint are assigned and Godot comes with the following physics joints. The hinge joint 3D. The hinge joint works as you would expect. It restricts the rotation of two physics bodies in a hinge-like manner and it has properties for setting its limits, behavior and applying a motor force to the hinge. The cone twist joint 3D. This joint acts like a ball and socket joint. It has properties for its range or swing span and its rotation or twist span. The slider joint 3D. The slider joint restricts the movement of a physics body along a certain axis. The best way to think about a slider joint is to see it as a piston. It can only extend and retract in one direction. Pin joint 3D. The pin joint can be used to pin two physics bodies together while allowing them to freely rotate. I think the best way to think about this joint is like a chandelier from the ceiling. It's hanging from one point, but you can twist it and turn it in any way you want. The generic 6 DOF joint. The generic 6 degrees of freedom joint can be shaped into a lot of different physics joints. It allows you to tweak the limits, forces and feels of all three rotation and movement axes. This physics joint is great for designing custom complex physics joints. The Skeleton 3D node. The Skeleton 3D node provides an interface for managing 3D skeletons and 3D skeletal animations. You will probably never add a skeleton node yourself, as Godot does not contain functionality for building 3D skeletons. But when importing a model with a skeleton, Godot uses this node as an interface for all your skeletal needs, and it contains a hierarchy of all the bones in your skeleton. The Bone Attachment 3D. This node allows you to easily attach a node or a group of nodes to a bone in a skeleton 3D. Think armor pieces, weapons or attachments that need to be welded to the bone to copy its transform throughout an animation or a ragdoll simulation. The Root Motion View node. This is an editor-only debugging node. All it does is show a grid in the editor and it's intended to be used with root motion animations. These are animations that have the movement of the character baked into the animation and it can be used for a ground reference to root the animation. The following notes are all used to set up different kinds of global illuminations in your scene. The Godot docs has a great read on what type of global illumination is best for your scene and how to implement that type. I'm gonna go over them here real quick, but definitely give the doc a read, don't worry, it has pictures. The Voxel GI note. The Voxel GI is one of the heavier ones, but it's quite easy to set up, just by adding the Voxel GI note and clicking bake right here. Please note that this does not bake the lights and shadows into your scene, just the Voxel GI map. You can still change the lighting after your scene has been baked. The Lightmap GI and Lightmap Probe. The Lightmap GI does bake lights and shadows into your scene. You will need to set up a second UV map on your models for the lighting data to bake onto. You do however get the option to bake only certain lights and I'll leave a great link to the tutorial down below. The Reflection Probe. The Reflection Probe is used to capture a reflection map. It basically takes a 360 photo from its location and all reflective materials can sample from this photo to generate realistic reflections. The Reflection Probe has a low performance cost and it gives great results. Definitely try this one out. The Importer Mesh Instance 3D. This one I need your help with. It has no documentation and I couldn't find anything about it online. I asked for it on Reddit and some people thought it was just a port of the 2D Mesh Importer or that it was used in the import process but actually not used by the user within a project. I'm not sure. If anybody knows, let me know. The Visible On Screen Notifier 3D and the Visible On Screen Enabler 3D. These two nodes are used to detect whether the camera can see a certain node. The notifier sends out a signal when the visual node is seen and the enabler enables the node when it is seen by the camera. The grid map node. A grid map is basically a 3D tile set. You can set up a mesh library that acts as tiles within the tile set and you can paint those into a grid. It also allows for vertical tiling using the floor parameter. Devlog Logan has a great demonstration of this in his video Tile Dungeons. Link is in the description. The audio listener 3D. By default, the camera will be the point that listens to 3D audio, but in case you want your ears to be somewhere else than your eyes, you can use this node to set up a listening point anywhere in your scene. The Audio Stream Player 3D. 
This is the 3D audio source of Godot. It can be used to play audio from a certain point in space, and it has all the audio settings that you would expect from an audio source. It can also be given an emission angle, which can limit the angle that the audio can be heard from. The navigation link, navigation obstacle, navigation region, and navigation agent 3D. These nodes are used to set up a nav mesh within your scene for pathfinding. The navigation region 3D looks at your scene and sets up a mesh of all the services that can be walked on and how they can be connected. The navigation agent 3D can then traverse your map in a natural and efficient flow. I personally had great results using the nav meshes within Godot, but they're still marked as experimental, so they might change in the future. Keep that in mind. The Occluder Instance 3D. The Occluder Instance 3D node can be used to improve performance by hiding objects that aren't visible to the camera. Please take note that the Occluder is recommended to be used on static objects, as moving the Occluder Instance 3D will trigger a recompilation that can take several frames. It is also recommended to use them in closed or semi-closed areas, as in large open areas, LODs and visibility ranges are recommended to improve performance. The Path 3D and Path Follow 3D. These are super fun. I didn't know about them yet, but they can be used to create 3D paths or 3D curves and bind a node to this path. They're great for setting up small animations and quick organic flows within your game. The Raycast 3D. The Raycast 3D node shoots out a ray in a given direction and reports on whether it hit something and what it hit. It's great for a lot of uses, but it's most used in shooting mechanics and interaction mechanics. The Shapecast 3D. The Shapecast 3D works the same as the Raycast 3D, only instead of shooting an infinitely thin ray, it shoots out a shape, so you can check for collisions in larger areas. The Spring Arm 3D. The Spring Arm 3D is basically a Raycast 3D, only it has the built-in functionality to move all its children to the point of collision. The best way to think about this node is, I think, a laser pointer. If you have the laser point as a child of the Spring Arm 3D, it will automatically act like a laser pointer by moving that laser point to the point of collision. The Remote Transform 3D. This node copies another node's transform to its own, so you can parent a node to this node without it actually being the parent in the hierarchy. Sounds a little confusing, but once you see it, it's not that confusing. The XR Camera 3D, the XR No 3D, the Open XR Hand, the XR Anchor 3D, the XR Controller 3D, and the XR Origin 3D. Phew! These are all nodes used to set up VR slash XR games. I currently don't have a functional VR setup and I haven't played with these myself. And instead of guesstimating what all these nodes do and maybe spreading misinformation, I'll leave these to the father of VR in Godot himself, Bastian. Link is in the description of this video. So, that should be all 3D nodes. Let me know if I missed any. Next video we're gonna dive into 2D notes. This whole series is gonna be about 5 videos, with the 5th video being the compilation of all the notes into one video. It's quite a big project, so I'm probably going to do a couple of other videos in between just to keep my sanity. But so far I've been ahead of my one month planning, so it's going pretty smoothly. Thank you guys for watching, a lot more fun stuff coming soon, so be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.